We move on. The next item is on zero net emissions. Starts on page 17, and the recommended motion is on page 20. Look for a move and a seconder. I'll second it. Oh. Move by Councillor Midgley, second by Councillor Cordover. Can I move it? I've already said you moved it. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, Councillor Cordover, Councillor Midgley seconds. You did put your hand up and wave. So. <laughs> Councillor Cordover. It doesn't matter. Councillor Cordover. Thank you very much, Mayor. This is a... Firstly, I'd like to thank Mr Dool and the staff uh, for organising this. What we're looking at tonight, which is very exciting, is um, presenting uh, two reports and also basically the headline of this motion is that Council formally commits to a target of net zero emissions for Council activities by 2035. Why? Because it is achievable and presents significant financial savings, risk reduction and leadership opportunities. So as you can read in this excellent report, it's good for finance, it's good for risk reduction, it's good for leadership and it's good for the climate. In terms of the financial savings, they are remarkable. Um, the leadership goal, the suggested leadership goal, uh, by formally committing to a, a target of net zero emissions for council activities by 2035 is $26.6 .6 million. Uh, the less we do, the less the cumulative savings will be, the higher the burden for ratepayers going forward. To quote the report at page 10, which is page 71 of our agenda, under the heading market goals, if we were to choose a less ambitious target than that which is recommended under the leadership goal, then Essentially, we would be, to quote the report, quote, anticipating that ratepayers will be comfortable with paying more over the longer time period as opposed to wearing any initial upfront costs. The cumulative savings presented in the three models, uh, which you can read about in the report, there was a leadership goal, a reach goal and a market goal. And the recommendation here is to choose that leadership goal. Incredibly, Business as usual, according to the report, is that if we do nothing, the projection shows that not only will there be a 22% increase in greenhouse gas emissions by 2035, which is significant, there will also be significant, indeed eye-watering, financial risk to Council. So the good news is that by adopting a leadership goal, we will have significant cumulative cost savings, with nearly half of the savings stemming from waste abatement actions. So what we have tonight is an excellent choice, uh, backed by a data-driven and evidence-based approach. If we read uh, page 14 of the report, which is on page 75 of our agenda under the heading Future Cost Savings, you can read exactly how emissions reductions offer very significant operational savings to the future operational costs of the Kingborough Council. As the report states, quote, it is important to note that even in the absence of a price on carbon, all of the options show financial savings associated with the transformation away from carbon intensive activities. And the report goes on. Given the recently available technologies and proven approaches to energy efficiency and waste minimisation, it should be determined that a failure to implement some or all of the activities described above is a failure in long term financial management. So that's why it's a great financial saving to adopt a formal target. But there's also the savings in terms of risk reduction and in terms of leadership opportunities. And so at this juncture, I would just like to ask a, a couple of questions, if I might. Um, so with your permission, Mayor, I was wondering if um, Mr Dahl would like to comment on the potential uh, risk reduction and maybe comment on the financial exposure that Council would be, um, yeah, would face. Mr Dahl. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it's an interesting time, a consummate timing to be discussing this report with the outcome of the American election, the sort of outcome of the American election anyway, um, because I, I think this kind of discussion is going to take on a whole new importance. Um, with America back in the game, um, I, I think a price on carbon is inevitable and... Even if Australia doesn't go down that track, then where we get our imports from and a lot of our finance from, this will come to get us. So I'm not trying to overblow the importance of it, but I think given it's proven that we have an opportunity to do this, and without a great deal of pain, surprisingly, um, I think it would be the prudent thing to do to 
sort of de-risk ourselves from a carbon point of view as quickly as possible. Thanks very much. In terms of the risk, I note that in the report it says this is achievable and presents significant financial savings and financial risk exposure reduction. Kingborough is a municipality that is particularly at risk and council, this is a quote, and quote, council may have significant financial exposure in the event of a mandatory carbon pricing in the future. End quote. It is true that major financial institutions and insurers across the world are recognising these risks and factoring into them into their risk matrices and our council too has acknowledged as much in our strategic risk register which stipulates that failure to plan for, adapt to and manage the impacts of climate change has a high risk rating. On page 15, which is 76 on our agenda, the quote is, failure to adequately plan for and integrate this target into council strategy and funding may result in a need for rapid transition in later years that increases ratepayer exposure both to both energy expenditure and carbon pricing. And you can read more about the risk exposure on page 17, which is page 78 of our agenda. Incredibly, Council's risk exposure between now and 2050 under a carbon price ranges from between 20 to $45 million. However, the report recommendation offers a financially sensible and practically achievable way forward, which I, as a ratepayer in Kingborough, am very grateful. It sets us, the report recommendation sets us towards a leadership goal which is a strong example of a council with grit, determination and a can-do attitude. In the context of a world where financial markets globally, intergovernmental organisations and governments at all levels are showing increased awareness of climate-related risks and climate-related opportunities, Kingra needs to adapt or risk significant financial exposure. <laughs> at this back. juncture... So I'm, Thanks very much. <laughs> I might just ask a couple of questions about um, Council's methane, uh, the methane flaring, because I think it would provide some interesting context. So, basically what the report shows is that waste accounts for 92% of all Kingborough's emissions. Petrol and diesel is 5.5%. Electricity from Council facilities is 1.2%. And electricity from street lighting is 0.5%. So, my question is, methane, which is a greenhouse gas 25 times worse than CO2, Methane flaring, my understanding is that it converts methane to CO2, which lessens, which thereby emits less green, bad greenhouse gases. Um, could you please give me some background about why the methane flaring is projected to be reduced at Beretta over time, ultimately with methane supply running out by 2027? Mr. Dill. Hang on. Up. Um, thank you, Mayor. The situation with methane, unfortunately, at Beretta, with the type of landfill it was, um, the methane supply throughout the site is very patchy. Um, so what we've done in recent times is we've expanded the extraction and we are extracting as much as possible from the site, but that's mainly from a safety and an environmental point of view to stop loss from the site. Um, Methane is produced by putrescible waste and it's quite a while since we put putrescible waste in there. So there will always be a relatively linear line on decrease in the amount of methane a site like that produces. So the projections in here do allow for that. So, and, and it's a relatively inexact science, but at the moment we're flaring as much as possible and that will gradually taper away over, unfortunately, 10 to 20 years. Um, as I said, it's a bit patchy there, so it's a little bit inexact, but that has been factored in as an offset against uh, our waste methane, um, but it will taper off um, around about potentially 2035. Thanks very much. So, in conclusion, the, the main three reasons why it's critical that we adopt this ambitious target tonight is firstly that it reduces our financial exposure, Without doing this, the financial exposure, a business as usual case, could be between 25 and $40 million. If we adopt the most ambitious, uh, as is recommended, the leadership goal, then we will cumulatively save $26.6 million. If we choose a reach goal, for example, it would be $21 million, or a market goal, it would be $9.8 million. So basically, the savings, by doing the right thing and planning early, are enormous. The report also contains an immense amount of detail with very succinct and solid recommendations, such as 
better data collection and recording and reporting, developing and implementing an emissions reduction strategy, creating department-specific goals, community education, embracing public disclosure of our greenhouse gas emissions reduction activities, undertaking economic analysis, uh, a report on climate-related financial risk, and including carbon risk as a financial risk. As the report says, although the, although three scenarios are presented to Council in this report, it is recommended that Kingborough Council implement the leadership goal, net zero emissions by 2035. This is because the goal is achievable and presents a significant amount of cumulative savings. As with any transformation, there will be an initial outlay for capital and operational expenditure, but this should be deemed as an investment as opposed to a cost. Council should consider creating its own internal investment value separate from the consolidated funds, which can also be topped up via a revolving fund with the initial investment paid off over 15 years. By adopting this proposal tonight, our Council will benefit from reducing our risk, improving our financial responsibility and sending a strong, clear message of leadership to the rest of the community and further afield. The costs of adopting a slower approach are significant and so when confronted with those choices, I commend the motion. Thank you. <clears throat> so for that reason, I'm comfortable with the 2050 target and won't be supporting the 2035 target this evening. Councillor Cordover to sum up. I had a question, first of all. Uh, Mayor, my first question is to Mr Dool. And uh, no, you're summing up, Councillor Cordover. Thanks very much, Mayor. We are looking at a proportion here. Uh, we've heard a lot in the debate tonight that we don't understand the bottom line, the costs. We actually do know the costs and they're throughout the report. The cost is actually on page one. Uh, carbon is a corporate risk and the, the amount of money that we're looking at spending as a result of if a carbon price were to be implemented tomorrow and we had between now and 2050 to rectify the fact that we're producing 14,500 tonnes of emissions, that cost, depending on the carbon price, if it's $16 or $2,300 as one of the examples, could be $40 million. If you look at page 78 of our report tonight, page 77, I'm going to read the quote. Without implementing any energy efficiency or emissions reduction in initiatives under a policy-driven scenario, Kingbrook Council is estimated to pay a total of $60.3 million in carbon offsets from 2020 to 2050. So we actually do know what the cost is. The 2050 target, which they're calling the market target here, which is what the Mayor has been saying essentially is a good idea, that will save the Council $9.8 million between now and 2050. But the 2035 target will save the Council $26.6 million. So by not adopting the recommendation tonight, we are adopting a projected spend. Just be aware of that. We are adopting a projected spend of an extra $16.8 million. So that's what we're signing up to tonight. I'll quote the report. It is determined, it should be determined that a failure to implement some or all of the activities described above is a failure in long-term financial management. So now I'm not going to accuse anyone of climate denialism, but I'll certainly be making it abundantly clear to the community that we were presented with costs and we chose this, the option that is $16.8 million more expensive than the option which meant that we would have to pay some upfront costs, let's say it's $140,000 for lighting now. Well, that equates to 0.3% of the potential cost of not running these abatements. So do you want to pay 300 times more in a few years or do you want to pay less now? We, we can see in the report that the international agenda is changing. The, the, whether it's the Task Force on Climate Related Financial Disclosures, the G20 countries, the Bank of International Settlement, every major bank and insurer in the world is pricing in carbon and this council isn't. <laughs> Now, if Goldman Sachs and Deutsche Bank and HSBC are doing it, we are going to get very much left behind if we don't. And you can see it in the report all the way through. It says that without doing anything, and I quote, we are anticipating, we are anticipating that raked payers will be comfortable with paying more over the longer term period as opposed to wearing any initial upfront costs. That's the proportion that I'm trying to explain. 92% of our waste 92% of our emissions is in waste. All these conversations about LED lighting costing 140 or, or uh, electric vehicles, keep your eyes on the proportion here. 92% of our emissions are coming from waste. We have mechanisms now to reduce the amount of household waste by 75%. It says all the way through the report that it's practical and feasible. And it says throughout the report Time. it will significantly reduce our risk and financial exposure. 
Okay, the motion was moved by Councillor Cordover and seconded by Councillor Grayson. It's that Council A acknowledges the receipt of one, the Kingborough Council Greenhouse Gas Emissions Report, October 2020. Uh, sorry, A acknowledges the receipt of one. Yes, sorry, I've got it right. Two, the Kingborough Council Net Zero Greenhouse Gas Emissions Report, October 2020. B, formally commits to a target of zero net emissions for council activities by 2035, and C, adopts the Kingborough Council Greenhouse and Energy Policy Zero Net Emissions. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against? Aye. Have a division. All those in favour, please raise your hand. It's Councillor Grace, Fox, Cordover, Midgley and Wasson. Those against? It's Councillor Street, Bastone, Reed, Westwood and Winter. The motion is lost. Next item.